the first step in the calculus of parametric curves was defining their tangents. And in this video, I want to define the lengths of parametric curves. How do I do this? The length of a curve will be eventually determined by an integral, but I want to set up an approximation process that will turn into that integral. This approximation process divides the curve into pieces and approximates the length of each piece by the length of a straight line between two points. In the diagram, I focused on the second last piece and the straight line that approximates the curve. That straight line is the hypotenuse of a right triangle where the other two sides are the change in x and the change in y over this part of the curve. The length of the segment then is given by Pythagoras, the square root of the squares of the changes in x and y. This describes each segment so that the approximation to length is the sum over all the segments. However, for a curve, the segments depend on time. So I can introduce a change in time, delta t, over which the changes in x and y happen. I can multiply and divide by this delta t, taking the division into the square root. And this produces an approximation. Then I let the number of segments grow to infinity, producing a finer and finer approximation as I go along. In the limit, this becomes an integral. The ratios between the changes become derivatives inside the square root. And finally, this is true as well in R3 with three components or in any Rn, and the general form is now shown here. Let me do some examples. In the earlier examples in the videos, I introduced the kind of expanding three-dimensional spiral with coordinate functions cos t, sin t, and t. I'll consider four revolutions of the spiral, so t is in the domain 0 to 8 pi. What is the length of this? I need to set up the arc length integral as I just defined it, the integral over the domain of the derivatives of the coordinate function. The derivatives are sine t, negative cos t, and 1. I square those and put them in the square root to get sine squared t plus cos squared t plus t under the root. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1, of course, so this is just 1 plus 1 equals 2 under the root, and this is just an integral of the constant root 2. The integral of a constant is just t, and evaluating on the bounds gives 8 pi minus 0, so the resulting length is 8 root 2 pi units. I'm going to do one more example here, both to practice arc length and to show some important tricks and techniques for these type of integrals. This is a curve called the asteroid with parameterization cos cubed t, sine cubed t, on the domain t in 0 to 2 pi. I set up the arc length integral by taking the two derivatives. Now showing the work, chain rule mostly, these are the derivatives. I square them to get this expression. This is a common, there is a common term in this expression, 9 cos squared t sine squared t, so I can factor out that term and I can even take it out of the square root as 3 cos t sine t. I use absolute value when I take the square out of the square root since the original may have been negative, but when squared and square rooted, the result is always positive. Then the term under the square root is again sine squared plus cos squared, which is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1, so I'm just left with this integral. This is a tricky integral because of the absolute value. How do I approach it? For this kind of integral, I do want to discuss the setup. You can ask a computer to just do the calculation for you, but I want you to be able to explain what the computer is doing, what the approach is. For this, let me go back to the drawing of the asteroid for a moment. Notice that this curve has four copies of the same arc, just reflected and rotated. To calculate its length, I can calculate the length of one quarter of it and then just multiply by four. This type of symmetry argument is extremely valuable in geometry problems, like the length of curves. If I only do one-fourth of the integral, the absolute value problem disappears. In the first quadrant, both sine and cosine are always positive, so I can just drop the absolute value. When I do that, multiplying by four since I'm only calculating one quarter of the length, I get a doable integral. The antiderivative here is sine 2t, and evaluating on the bounds gives an arc length of 6. With geom geometric problems, you should always ask if the result is reasonable. 
This is the length, so the result should be positive. So far, so good. The asteroid is a shape that sits just inside the unit circle, which has circumference 2 pi, or a little bit over 6. The fact that this length is 6 is very believable. Do always ask yourself if your answers make sense, just like I've done here with this particular length.